Um, when Kintilla asked me to come and talk and said, oh, you've only got 10 minutes, I kind of thought there's no way I'm going to be able to keep my talk for 10 minutes. I see a couple of my students in the room, um, hi Brittany, hi Sam, and they're probably doubting I could do anything in 10 minutes. But uh, she, she expressed an interest in sort of work that uh, I was doing with regards to imagery and social media and digital media. And, and then a couple of weeks later said, oh, by the way, no visual aids. So I'm like, well, this is going to be very difficult. <laughs> so I've cheated. Kintilla, come back here. I need you as a hand model. Um, so I've uploaded some images onto my blog. I love cheese. And my blog's name is acarttakephotos.com. Uh, and slash social. So get your iDevices out, get your iPhone out, or whatever you've got, and, and you can see some examples of that. So you, you hold that up for a second. And this is the only time in one of my talks you're allowed to use your phone, right? I can see you, I know what's going on. So acomptakephotos.com slash social, I can see the traffic on my site going into okay. So I've got three photos on there. Uh, the first one is a photo I took. Uh, in Kulutafati, Castle Hill, which is about an hour's drive out west from here. Uh, and it's a lovely setting. It's a picture of the Milky Way rising over the, um, the, the limestone tours there. It's about 25 photos that were stitched together. It took me about an hour and a half, I think, to take this photo alone. Uh, there's a picture of me right in the middle holding a torch, and I had to keep checking to see how long I should hold that torch on for in case it washed out, blah, 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 blah. Once I got home about 2 a.m. that day, I had to download it. I then the next morning had to stitch it all together. We're looking at three hours worth of processing and everything like that. I posted on Facebook, all proud as a punch, and I got 12 freaking likes. <laughs> and I think I got one comment from someone saying, oh, wow. All right? It wasn't my wife. It was someone from America, so at least it was international. All right. And I think he since deleted his comment. Maybe it wasn't that impressive. Okay. The next photo down from that is a picture of my youngest daughter sitting on my shoulders while I'm working on my iPad in our lounge. I'm sitting on the floor, I like to spend my time on the floor, uh, it's somewhere where I am most comfortable, and my kids like to lie on me, they like to jump on me, they like to do that sort of thing. So there's a picture of my youngest daughter sitting on my shoulders, I'm working on my iPad, and my wife snapped that photo. Now that photo was bad. <laughs> my wife is here, so I should keep this. Uh, <laughs> But it's out of focus. It's got this horrible Instagram filter on there. It's not really cropped that well either. I mean, I had to do a little bit of work on this afterwards. It's, it's, the contrast is all off. Uh, and it got like 95 likes. <laughs> and about 50 comments. I'm like, oh, screw it. <laughs> now, even further down than that, there's a picture that one of my students posted on my Facebook wall of Gru from Despicable Me. <laughs> And it's a picture that he took off his screen. He didn't even do a screen capture. He took a photo off his screen of Groove and then with MS Paint put a goatee on him and then posted it on my Facebook and said, now I know who you remind me of. <laughs> 123 likes <laughs> and about 25 comments. Now, all that effort I put into in that first photo, and that first photo was actually a finalist in National Photographer of the Year competition last year. I was very proud of that photo. Only 12 likes. And those other ones, which are horrible photos, let's be honest. They're, they're terrible, honey. I'm really sorry, but they're horrible. But they captured a moment that engaged my audience far better than my photo of the Milky Way rising over these amazing limestone tours that's taken millions of years to form. Why is that? And that sort of got me interested. These are the examples I use, but I've been working on this project for a, a little while now, trying to understand what sort of photos engage people online, especially via social media. And this is a good example of how technology has kind of changed the way we function and the way we behave as consumers. Now, those things in your hand have fundamentally changed the way that photographs are taken. This is another example of that might be when air travel became more common. When air travel became common, not only did people travel, but we saw a huge increase in multicultural families growing because people can now travel to other countries. And they started dating people who maybe they wouldn't have dated before because they were a different color and stuff like that. Now, even though the social stigma might have changed, my wife and I are an example of these sort of mixed race couples. I was born in the UK. My parents are Indian by heritage. I'm Indian by heritage. My wife grew up in Tarama. You know, 50 years ago, no chance we would have met. No chance we would have dated. No chance we would have even come across one another's paths. But nowadays, we're married and we've got lovely kids. And one of them's all. <laughs> but what, what does stand out is that the way that photographs are taken now as a result of our iDevices, whether it's an Android or an iPhone or whatever, has fundamentally shifted what it means to take a photo. Now in 2013, there were more photos taken in that one year than in the rest of history combined. That's a huge number of photos taken in one year, all through the explosion of phones having cameras. 
and people not just taking photos, but sharing them. And this is where the shift happens. Now, people are no longer taking a photo of a beautiful event. Now, 20, 30 years ago, we might have had a photographer at our wedding take beautiful photos, and we'll show people in an album when they come to visit. You got anyone remember doing that? Oh, God, we did that a bit, actually. I hated it. But, oh, look, and there's me getting changed again. Oh, there's me. There's me and my brother. Yeah, that's the old Now, we take a photo. Of, I took a photo of the theater in there, and I put it on Facebook within five minutes, and that's what photos mean. It's not a great photo. I don't have a great uh, camera with me. I don't have all the equipment. I have my phone. I took a photo. I shared it instantly, and people are engaged with it. It's not about the quality of the photo anymore, but it's about the story that photo tells and the engagement that it builds. And that engagement comes far more from the connection that you have with your audience than it does from the actual quality of the picture. So even though we can look over here and there's some beautiful pictures, look at this lovely couple, if you can say, it says stay. Ah, oh, magnificent escape. It's a beautifully staged photo with this couple who probably not met more than an hour before this photo was taken. And it's a lovely picture, professionally taken, matters when it comes to advertising. When it comes to digital media, people care a lot more about the story that's behind it rather than the quality of the photo that we're finding, the connection and the immediacy behind it. That's why you see people taking photos of their coffee. Who cares about your coffee? <laughs> but sometimes that coffee might be in Paris, and then that matters to people. And then you can say, right now, right here, I'm in Paris, and you're not. Uh -uh. Okay? <laughs> that's, that's, not everyone does that. I do that. <laughs> but that's the implication that's kind of brought there. So I'm flying off to Melbourne tomorrow, maybe I'll take a photo of me at the airport, ready to go to Melbourne. Look at me going to Melbourne, see you in a bit. Okay? We know that photos kind of make sense because when you're traveling through your Facebook feed or whatever, it'll pop up and it'll take up more of that space and that social media presence. Therefore, more people are going to stop and look at it. Now, when that photo actually connects with the audience as well, then you start getting engagement. I play, I spend a lot of time with uh, companies out there like yourselves who, who maybe are trying to understand digital media, trying to understand social media, and they say, we've got a client with 600 likes, and they really want to have 7,000 likes. What can we do? I said, it's obvious. It's really easy to get 7,000 likes. You just hold a competition and say, if you like our page, we'll give you this. But 7,000 likes doesn't mean anything unless people are engaging with your product, engaging with your page. And so it's much better to have 600 people engaging with your page than 7,000 people who never go onto that page ever again after that competition. And that's where things are not clicking through. So how do we use photos to engage people? Part of what social media is, is that it's social. It's trying to engage you on a much deeper level than actually just the branding side, or just the sort of advertising side. So if you're able to use your photos as a way of trying to engage with people and show a story and a human side of you, even if that photo isn't perfect, but if it's immediate, it's human, and it's showing you an insight into that company that maybe is not seen in, uh, from just your normal advertising material, you're more likely to go to get that engagement. Now there are other things, I could talk about hours, like I said on this. You know, asking questions is always going to get you more engagement. When it comes to the, um, the Facebook algorithm, we know that the number of likes don't really count anymore, it's the comments and the shares that you need. So how do you get people commenting and sharing, that sort of thing. But I'm going to, how much time have I taken up? Oh, look, exactly 10 minutes, that's brilliant. <laughs> um, but I guess the takeaway that I want you to have from this is there's so I mean, I apologize, there are some photographers here, and it is an art, and it's still needed. But when it comes to running your social media campaign, your digital media campaign, sometimes having the immediate human engaging story is far more important than having this picture that you pay $2,000 for. Okay? Sometimes showing a quick snapshot, a slice of life, is what people really want to see, and that's the sort of thing that will engage your customers. Now, there are going to be times when the professional photos matter to your headers and things like that, but if all you ever see is that professional side, guess what? You're going to be seen as a professional advertising platform. People don't want to engage with ads. We fast forward ads. We sign up to Netflix. We do other things. But if you show the human side, then people are going to start paying attention. They're going to start engaging. They're going to start connecting with you. And that's the sort of thing that's going to make a difference when it comes to doing your social media campaigns and your online campaigns. I'm not going to talk anymore. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, miss. So does it hold for businesses advertising businesses as well? If it does it hold for businesses, advertising businesses will really just depend on your target audience. I, I should I should admit I was talking more to B2C in this sort of situation. Now if your uh, if your target audience is a mixture of consumer and business, then I think you can definitely show the human side. And there's no reason to actually show a bit of human side, especially if that's part of your brand identity. If you are a very professional, sort of straight-laced sort of being 
uh, and organization, then I don't think Facebook is your place anyway. I, I, I might go against the grain with the other speakers, but I think it's better sometimes to not have a Facebook page than to do it back uh, It's not all right to just have a Twitter page and think, yeah, that's sweet, we're in, we destroy it. <laughs> it's, it's better to actually do it well, uh, or not do it at all. So I think with B2C, it really does depend on the brand that you have and the personality you have. Uh, and that would really make a difference. Um, I like to use the Times Higher Education uh, uh, Twitter as an example because they, they're a bit crazy. Times Higher Education writes all their articles about universities and different rankings and everything, very proper and professional and very engaging sort of thing. Uh, and then every 10th post, it's, it's kind of a weird you know, human side saying, we're just about to have a spitball fight with the people over at the sports editorial team, who do you think's gonna win? You know, and things like that. And then we take a photo of, we just uh, filled up uh, Natalie's room with XYZ as an April Fool's prank, you know, how mad do you think she's going to be? Nothing to do with higher education, nothing to do with publishing, but it shows a human side to their business that makes people go and they engage with it. And that's the sort of stuff that ends up getting retweeted, and that's what people really want to see. If all you ever see on my Facebook page was uh, the branding side, the professional side, people aren't going to engage with you. They want to be social, and that means showing a bit of human side. Other questions? I've just seen Laura's one, so Laura's one of my students. Thank you very much.